Welcome to the Five Steps to Starting a Business Masterclass. I'm Susie Rains, and I will be covering this class for you. You are in the right place if you are thinking about starting a business, you've never started a business before, you're shifting in your current business, or you just want information on how to start a business. I want to share my story with you. So I spent about 15 years in corporate America. I have a business degree. And later on, I joined the Army as a medic. When I got out of the Army, I actually went into veterinary medicine. I needed a shift, and I wanted to start my own business. Even with the experience that I had in corporate America and having a business degree, I was still struggling with what to do. What were the steps to start my own business? And that's when I created Business Simplified. I now help people shift from a medical career into starting their own business and walking them through step by step. That's what this masterclass is really going to cover. Those five steps that you really need to consider as you get started into entrepreneurship. What I'm going to cover today is how to define your vision, the service that you offer and pricing, the importance of the client experience, how to know when to ask for help, and how to calculate cost and budget when starting. We're gonna start with vision. So what you wanna do is you really want to think about what do you want your future business to look like? Get that picture in your head. Think about the service that you love. Think about how you want to serve people. And then think about who it is that you would like to work with. Who are the people that you wanna provide your service for? You can journal about this. You need to write it down somewhere, either electronically or pen and paper, so you can get it out of your head and really start identifying what you want your business to look like. Now, part of your vision is going to be looking at yourself. Your self-concept is incredibly important. You're leaving an identity with the job that you have now. You're leaving what you're doing. So when I left the veterinary world, that was the last job I had before I started my business. When I left the veterinary world, I had to let go of the structure and the stress and all the things that went into working in a veterinary clinic. I worked in an emergency clinic that was open 24-7. So I had long shifts, overnight hours, and I had to let that go. And then I had to think about, who do I want to be as a business owner? What do I want my days to look like? How do I want to structure it? And who am I being? Am I being today that person? I had to step into that new person when I sat down at my computer to start my business. And I had to think about what would I be doing? What are some of the tasks I want to do? Am I an action taker? Am I a decision maker? Can I move forward in imperfect action? So just taking action, just getting started. So these are things you want to be considering. And this is something that you can sit down with a journal and write about as well. Write out what it is that you want to be as a new business owner. And you may bring some of the the identity things that you have from your current position working for somebody else. You might bring that into who you are today. And that's okay. That's part of our experience. So for me, I would picture myself when I used to work in business, when I was in corporate America. I would picture myself at my desk. What was I doing? What were some of the structures that were there? And it helped me envision how I wanted to be working in my business. So those are the two things for your practice vision. So you want to think about what you want your business to look like and what do you want to look like as that new business owner. The next thing we're going to talk about is offer and pricing. When you're considering your service, you're going to have to think about how do you want to deliver that to you, your clients? So what is your offer? Are you working with them one-on-one? Are you working with them in a group? Are you doing a membership? Are you writing a book? Are you writing a course? What are the ways that you're offering your services to people? And then you're going to think about how much you want to charge. What goes into pricing is your current experience and your pricing can change as time goes on. So think about what experience do you have bringing into your new business? And if you're a brand new business owner and you're doing something that you haven't done before, I'm going to use my experience as an example. I got a coaching certification for health and life coaching after I left veterinary medicine. And yes, I was a new coach, but 
I was a sergeant in the army and I had soldiers under me and I was a manager and I did know how to mentor and coach. It was just a matter of shifting that experience into coaching around business instead of coaching around a soldier in the army. So a lot of the experience that you have is transferable and it should be reflected in your pricing. If you're not sure where you should be on the price spectrum when it comes to experience, you can always start with what you're comfortable with asking in a price, and then you can raise your prices as you gain more and more experience in that new way that you're working with your clients. The other thing you want to consider is the type of client. So what type of client are you selling to? For me, I sell to new business owners. They don't have a huge budget, and I understand that. I'm priced at a good price for someone starting out. It's not unreasonable. It takes their budget into account. I know that it's a tax write-off for them. And so I price myself in a way that is affordable to them. Now, if you're working with high-end clients and say that you decided that you want to work with clients who make a higher income, then your pricing should reflect that. You also want to think about the client's experience. So what are you offering in your services? So if you're offering high-end services and a lot of value, then you want to consider that in your price as well. And then the other thing you want to think about is how many clients can you see if you're doing one-on-one? -on -one? There's only one of you and there's only so many hours in the day, so you don't want to overbook yourself. And so pricing can help you see less clients but get paid what you're worth and what your value is in a way that you're not overworking yourself. And there's ways that you can structure your pricing and you can reevaluate it as time goes on. And you're going to want to review your pricing and adjust it depending on what your offers are. And this is something that you want to be thinking about as you're starting your business. Your client experience. So the value that you bring, and that's tied into pricing. So you want to make sure that the value that your clients are getting is what they paid for as well as what type of experience they're having. How is it that you provide your services? Is it easy for them to follow? Do you give them more than they expect? Client expectations. Are they expecting to just meet with you and that's it? And yet you give them all these other tools and resources on top of that. And they're like, whoa, this is amazing. I got way more than I thought I was going to get. That's a huge thing. Creating that experience for your clients that they go, wow. I need to refer Susie. She knows what she's doing. She helped me a ton, way more value than I paid. I need to refer her to other people and I want to write her a testimonial. So your client experience is going to help you with client retention. So they're going to keep working with you. It's going to help you with referrals. They're going to talk about you and it's going to help you with testimonials. When to ask for help. So when it comes to growing your business, you really need to pay attention to what your income goals are and if you're meeting them. And if you're achieving your income goals, then you definitely want to look at when you can hire help. So at first, you're probably going to be doing everything yourself, and that's okay. You want to be thinking about in the future, as your income goals get reached and you start to make more and more money, who can you hire? to help you in what areas. And you're going to think about the client experience. It may be that you hire somebody to take something off of your plate so that you can spend more time with your clients. Or maybe you can extend something that you offer to your clients because now you have more time and you can hire somebody to do some of your back office work. You can hire a VA to help you, a bookkeeper to do all your books for you. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but you want to be thinking about this as you're creating your business. This is also going to help you with how fast you grow. So when you can hire help, you can move faster. So if you can hire help to take care of things for you, you can have more clients and bring in more revenue and speed up the growth of your business. So you want to be thinking about this. Your cost and your budget. So how much are your startup costs? You need to be able to calculate those. What do you need right now to get your business up and running? And this is going to be taking into consideration your client experience as well. What kind of tools do you need to serve your clients? Operating costs, those are the ongoing costs that it takes for you to run your business. 
So you want to be thinking about what goes into your daily operations. What do you need to pay for in order to take care of your clients? And then thinking about your income goals, and that's going to be how you balance out your budget. So the more income that you have coming in, the bigger budget you have for your operating costs. So you can fluctuate and upgrade things. So maybe you don't pay for something today because you don't have a huge budget. As your income grows, you upgrade that service and it's something that you can now pay for. So you get additional help. All of this is in financial. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your finances and how you want your business to grow financially and where you want that money to go. So here's a visual of what it is that I just covered. And this is your business foundation. This is what I coach on. It starts with your vision and self-concept. You think about what do you want your business to look like and who are you working for? What is the service that you provide to them? Your self-concept, who are you being and who are you when your business is a thriving business and you love what you're doing and you love the people you work with? Who is that person and developing that person today? We're going to go to the left and we're going to look at your type of clients. So this is part of your vision. You're thinking about who are the clients that I love working with and you're going to think about where. Where are they? Where do they go? Where do they hang out? What are some things that they love? so that you know where to position yourself marketing-wise to show up and say, hey, this is who I am and what I do. Then you have the how. How do you want to communicate to them? How do you want to show up? For example, I have a podcast. I love doing my podcast. I love having guest speakers on. I love sharing with people my knowledge about business and how to get started. And so that's one of the ways that I like to communicate. It could be social media pick which one you enjoy. If you want a YouTube channel, if you want to go to networking events, if you want to speak in front of live audiences, these are all things that how do you want to communicate to your audience that I'm here, this is how I help, this is what I do. And thinking about that in the setup of your business is key. Now we're going to go to the right and we're going to look at your offer and pricing. So your offer and pricing, that is a part of the client experience, as I explained earlier. The client experience goes into thinking about what do you offer your clients and how do you deliver it? And then how much do you charge? And it's the process of onboarding a client and follow-up. So how are they taken care of when they sign up with you, their experience with you all the way through, and then how are you following up with them once they are no longer a current client In order to either they come back and work with you again, maybe you have a new service that you offer or they want to work with you again just because they love working with you and they're able to share. So when you follow up with them, it reminds them, oh, yeah, I worked with Susie and I want to share Susie with somebody that I know that could use her services. So really thinking about that. And then the finance is the other piece, and that is completely tied to your pricing and offers, your income goals, your budget, hiring help. All those things fall under finance, and you should be thinking about those as you're starting your business. And as you can see, this is your foundation. This is all you need to know. And each one of these areas is going to shift and change and grow with your business as you move forward. You have to start in each area, have something that you're thinking about starting with. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It's just starting. I always encourage people to just get started. Work in each one of these areas. Come up with your first idea, your first thought, your first thing, and move forward with it. And it can change, and that's okay. I have resources that I offer to help you build this foundation in a detailed way. I have an online course, which is a time saver for people who are currently working but they want to start their business and they're thinking, I don't have time to start my business. This online course is at your own pace and you can do it in as little as one hour a week. There are modules and lessons, video lessons, and I do a monthly live coaching call. So you can interact with me once a month and talk about where you are in the process and meet with other business owners who are going through the course as well. That's one of the things that I offer. The other one is one-on-one custom coaching. This is step-by-step instruction specifically for your current business. So if you're a person that 
needs accountability, wants the support, wants to ask questions, interacting with me one-on-one. I offer that to people. We meet weekly and really dive into what your business is and each one of these areas and how to get them set up. It's very specific to you and it's very custom to you. And for some people, that's what they need. It's harder for them to do the online course on their own. They really want somebody to bounce ideas off of. Does this sound good? Does that sound good? How does this all work? And that's why I offer the one-on-one coaching. I have limited spaces available for my one-on-one custom coaching because I want to give you the best experience that you can possibly have. And I allow you to reach out to me in between coaching sessions. So I keep that offer low so that I can spend more time with my one-on-one clients. If you're interested in learning more about starting a business simplified and me, you can always listen to my podcast. It's Starting a Business Simplified, Navigating the Shift. I'm Susie Raines. You'll hear success stories from other entrepreneurs. You'll hear business tips. You'll hear my story and personal things that I'm doing in my business as I move forward. All of those things. And you can tune in where you listen to your favorite podcasts. You can click on my website, suzyrains.com. There's other resources on my website as well. I love being an entrepreneur and I love helping other entrepreneurs. So if you have any questions, you can go to my website and schedule a call with me. If you're curious to know more, I'd be happy to talk to you. I'm Susie Rains, And as always, keep it simple.